Hey, what is shaking bacon? Welcome back to another book club. This is book club 15. We are on chapter four, I believe, of Trout Magic. We skipped chapter three because it was one chapter long. And it was very sexual. And kids watch this. And my parents watch this. So yeah, but before we jump into chapter four, a couple of announcements. One, Subscribe to the channel if you have not. Most of you that watch these things do not subscribe to the channel, so please subscribe to the channel. That really helps me out. Second, I have some merchandise. I opened a Shopify store, some hats and stuff. This is one of the hats. However, this is a misprint. This is not going to be green. This will be yellow on any orders. There's hoodies, there's shirts, all that fun stuff. If you do want to help the channel, help me keep fishing, keep making videos, then please check that out. I'll leave the link to the description in that, as well as the description to purchase this fantastic book. In chapter four, entitled A Flick of the Favorite Fly, another chapter that just got me uh, kind of roaring laughing at the end. Uh, and just, you know, some tried and true things about fishing. And, you know, one of the big things, you know, he talks about is, you know, there's very few rules uh, in fishing. and But one of the rules is, is when you have a guest come from out of town, uh, when you have somebody come fishing with you or take someone new fishing, you know, there's the rule that it's going to suck because, you know, the farther out of town they come from, the lousier the fishing is going to be. And it just seems to work out that way sometimes. Uh, fortunately, recently with guiding, I haven't had that much of issues, although I was working on a private ranch. It's not super hard to get into fish. But I remember when I would take people, new people fishing, uh, Back when I was in high school, you know, just out of high school and in college, it never seemed to be good. You know, I always got away saying, you know, it was good before, it was good yesterday or good last week. And they talk about that in the book, uh, how, you know, it was, you always get that saying, you know, you should have been here last week. Uh, and in this chapter, Art Flick, another uh, author comes down, or not, doesn't come down, but comes over from upstate New York, fishes with the author, Robert Traver in his homeland of Michigan. And, you know, they, they talk about also how you can learn stuff from every fisherman. You know, there's a story, you know, it's funny local waters and I'm kind of experiencing this a little bit right now, having just moved to Montana, you know, local waters, you know, the locals, they got it all dialed in, they got it figured out. But, you know, this, as this chapter kind of shows and how fishing often goes, rules, are meant to be broken, especially with fish. They don't always do exactly what we expect them to do or what they should do. And they're fishing just this little popular brook trout stream that uh, the author really enjoys. And, you know, Robert tells his buddy Art, because he's the local, he's like, hey, like this spot is really good. You know, little flies, you want to use little dries here. That's never seen a big fly do whatever here use little flies. So, you know, what does Art do is he takes this big old, uh, I think it's a gray fox variant, this big old fly that's, you know, about the size of a green drake. And he's like, I'm just going to try this first and then maybe I'll downsize. And sure enough, he throws it in there, first cast, big old brookie comes up and it takes him down to the junk, snaps him off. But just the shock and the irony that it wasn't small, but big, they got him going. That was the only really nice fish, I guess, that they had that that time. But just the jokes going back and forth, and then bumming flies off. You know, he uh, Robert sees that fly work, and then he's like, "Hey, you know, do you have any extras in your box?" And he's like, "Yeah, you know, that's one of my favorites." You know, you kind of have your favorites, and a lot of them, though most people do, because I'm horrible at keeping up with flies, and often don't have my favorite fly in the right size when I need it, but that's, that's me. That's not most people. Most people have their stuff together and, and you know, you know, I don't. So, uh, but it talks about, you know, the lure of your favorite fly right here, but all odds, the most covering lesser. I learned from Arthur, you know, talking about the lessons that you learn from people. I learned from Arthur was this, that even the master himself, a man who tracked down and dreamed up his own creation, was himself a helpless slave to a favorite fly, even as you and I. 
And, you know, he goes on to talk about how we develop our favorite flies. You know, a lot of times it happens by mishap where we, we get those days where the fish are just eating anything. And, you know, of course it's our new fly, you know, that's, that's making it work. And, you know, it's this or that, and, you know, it's the right size, the right color. Uh, I once had someone tell me, you know, the fish started biting because of the bead was this color. It was this tint of uh, pink bead and it just wasn't the case, but, uh, after struggling and then catching fish, you know, the bite just turned on and, you know, we tell ourselves these things and don't get me wrong. Sometimes that stuff's the case. Uh, however, more than often than not, it's, it's just a matter of happenstance and whatnot. And the end of the chapter is, is super funny. Uh, as Robert kind of explains what, you know, makes excuse or explains, you know, why the trip was so tough for the two of them, you know, that the fishing didn't really live up to, the hype that Robert had made it to his buddy Art. And he says, you know, I'm afraid our local trout here are just plain illiterate. Since they haven't been able to read our books, naturally they couldn't know how good we are. Kind of saying, you know, the fish didn't know how good we are, so they didn't know that they were supposed to eat. But the funniest part, you know, that's true. And, you know, I've often been, you know, I wake up in the morning and piss excellence. And, you know, if the fish knew how good I was, you know, this would be different. But you know, Art says, you know, I have a more comforting theory. Your trout aren't illiterate at all. They've avidly read both of our books. <laughs> Consequently, they do know how good we are. So naturally, when they saw us both together, they simply ran and fled in terror. <laughs> and I just couldn't help but laugh at the truth of that. Not really the truth, but the funniness of that and how we can hype ourselves up. And, you know, the fish didn't want any of this. They don't want this smoke, you know. You know, they don't want this smoke, and I don't blame them. You know, once they get on this, if they don't run and hide, they're going to be in the net. They're going to be pierced lips. So, you know, if they're trying to avoid that, and they see me, they better run and hide. So, just some funny stuff. I really enjoyed reading this book so far. Uh, we'll be back here again with another book club. Please leave a like, all that jazz, tight lines, get out there, go fish. And we'll see you in the next one.